Hey guys, how's it going? Six Beat here, and today I'm going to show you how me and Chow Chow made this really sick bass from our song Never Ending Story. <laughs> Okay, so we may as well get started. So here we go. Well, let's do this. You guys ready? I don't know. I don't, I don't think you're ready. I, I really don't think you're ready. Okay, so basically to start this one off, what we are going to want to do is in oscillator A, we're going to want to go to analog, open up the basic shapes, and then go to the little sawtooth. I think that's wavetable 2, position 2, yeah. Yeah, there we go, that's perfect. Okay, leave the volume at about 75%. That's a, that's a perfect there. All these other settings are good to go for right now. Then what we wanna do is open oscillator B. That's the most important. Not actually, I mean, it actually kinda of is. Um, but anyway, so hit the analog again. Go to the basic shapes, and then we want to head over to the square wave because uh, this is all about squares, right? Because we ain't, we ain't, uh, we ain't bad over here. No, not us. Some horrible humor right there. Anyways, uh, so now what we want to do is we want to open up FM from B on oscillator A, and turn that up to, um, what is it again? I can't remember. I think it's like 32% or something like that. Yeah, 32%. Let's see all the sounds. Let's see if we're if we're getting anywhere. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where where I think that we're we want to be heading here. Um so after this, we want to also turn up the oscillator B up two octaves. Because that's important. Everybody loves to have uh, harmonics and uh, different uh, sounds on different frequency bands to help fill everything out. Um, so now it's time for the filter. Also a very, very important part to the sound. Um, I use the reverb. Um, bring the cutoff to about 220, 215 hertz. Um, where are we? Here we go. Resonance in your pan are good. I bring the drive up to about a hundred percent because, like, I drive really fast because my name's Six Speed, right? Um, and then as well, we want to turn on key tracking. Key tracking is important. It makes everything in life better. So let's check it out and see where we're sitting at now with this sound. Ooh, that was loud. I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm going to turn that down. Make sure to turn yours down before you go and test it. Here we go. Hey, it sounds like we made an 8-bit retro thing. Now we just need to throw some redux on that. And uh, we, got, we got a nice little Mario sound going for us. To keep the sound going here, sorry that I keep stalling with my horrible humor and jokes. But what I'm going to do now is turn on the mono, because mono is great. Everybody loves mono. And then, um, let me just take a quick look over here, a quick little gander. Um, yeah. Okay, so now I think that that's good. Um, so this is where you should be sitting at before we get to the effects on it. I shouldn't really sound much different than it was about five seconds ago, except now it's going to be centrally located in the stereo field instead of left and right. So let's see how this sounds. Yeah, boys, that was lit. So now for the most important part, let's hit the FX section, boys. So the first one that I'm going to do is we're going to go distortion, hyperdimension, some phaser, and then some compressor. So let's start with the distortion. Pretty much everything in the distortion is good, except I'm going to bring the drive down to only about 12%. Um, 
just so it doesn't distort the sound too much, but it gives it a little bit of the nice uh, crisp sound that we're kind of looking for. The next one that we want to do is the Hyper Dimension Expander. So in the Hyper, we're going to leave everything the same, except we're going to drag the mix down to about 30%. After this, we are going to bring the size on the dimension down to about 5% and then bring the mix up to 30% because that's the way that we live. We live dangerously. Um, no, but seriously, this is actually a really good uh, uh, technique to use on a lot of sounds. I pretty much almost use this on every sound. I uh, use a really low size on the dimension expander, somewhere between about 10 and uh, zero percent and then I bring the mix up to about to taste it just uh, helps widen the stereo field a little bit of it I guess and just uh, makes your sound sound a little bit fuller so this is where we're sounding at now with the patch so we're actually pretty close to the initial sound now so here's another technique that I actually use on a lot of my uh, sounds. I, I turn on the phaser and I bring the rate down to zero, zero hertz. Um, as well, bring the depth down and the frequency down. Um, I bring the mix down to about 50% as well. And then this sound, I didn't do it. Um, because I didn't use a lot of macros in or a lot of macros in this one I used more um, I used a little bit of pitch automation which I'm gonna go and explain uh, a little bit later but um, in a lot more of my sounds recently I've been using a lot of like specific um, automation so basically the whole sound um, as far as wavetables and everything is all automated I kind of rerouted in the matrix to the macro knobs and then I just kind of re-automate all the macro knobs myself. Um, I used to use all the LFO tabs and envelope tabs but I've just personally kind of fallen in love with the whole macroing and automation side. It just gives you a lot more control and I've been really happy with the results that I've come out with um, uh, with a lot of my songs. So yeah anyways back to the song so after we add the phaser in here um, and everything is all set 50% feeds good and phase is good where it's at and then the final effect that we're gonna throw on here is a compressor make sure to turn on the multiband because we all love the multiband and then just kinda turn up the gain to taste you know I mean you don't want it clipping you don't want it distorting so I'm gonna go mess around with that right now and uh, see where it ends up Bam bam, so that's basically the general sound. Um, so here's a quick little tip, this is how I did the, the pitch automation. Um, one way that you can do it is you can use the pitch bend knob down here and you can do this, just move this around and when you pull it over and uh, you open up Ableton like this, open up the tab, you'll notice in the little automation thing down here um, and you hit, pl I personally hit plus, you don't need to, this just makes it easier for editing, but you can basically now change. So that's one way that you can automate your pitch, but the way that I automated the pitch in this one is I went like this, hit macro one, and then global, and master tune. And then I turned the master tune up two. Rename this pitch band, and we're good to go. So now, when I play the song and I play with the macro, definitely a useful tool to know. You can use that on a lot of different sounds. And it always definitely has helped me out. Um, I love pitch bend. It can really take a uh, otherwise dull sound a pretty far away. Um, so basically, that's the patch that we got going on here. Um, so if you take that 
and you put it in the song up here where the other bass is. Um, this is kind of the automation that I played with. Uh, for the first bar, I brought it down and back up at the end, held it level, and then peaked it up and brought the pitch back up. So this is what it sounds like with the pitch automation. As you can see, it kind of helps it out a lot. Um, I'm going to delete the pitch automation and show you guys what it sounds like without it. It's pretty boring without it. Um, definitely makes a big difference in the song, that's for sure. <laughs> So basically, this shows you how to take a extremely simple, just square wave, a sawtooth with square wave FM modulation on it, a reverb filter, <clears throat> some distortion, and then pitch automation, and you can make a super sick trap bass. Everybody's always, uh, I mean sound design's sick, I love sound design, don't get me wrong, but everybody always keeps going into these complex things and making it seem like it's so hard to achieve great sounds without um, or without complexity um, but the fact of the matter is I mean maybe you disagree with me I personally think that this is a really sick sound I love it um, I feel like it really brings the track together and you know like it's simple legitimately just the sawtooth square wave FM modulation on the sawtooth a reverb filter and some uh, what is it um, distortion along with um, some pitch automation you know super super simple and it goes a long way so don't ever underestimate that stuff so yeah so that's the tutorial for today um, that pretty much wraps it up if you guys have any questions feel free to comment or message me directly and I'll see if I can answer your questions and I'll get to them as soon as I can um, as well make sure to subscribe and like um, because I got a lot more content coming out um, subscribing will work in your benefit as well because I have a giveaway that I'm going to be doing. It's going to be uh, hopefully some, some production related gear. Not sure exactly what it's going to be yet. It's probably going to be something like an audio interface or maybe some headphones or even a microphone. You never know. Maybe even a Serum license. Um, we'll, we'll see uh, what my budget is when we get a little bit closer to, to mid-March here. Um, but again, because of how low my uh, subscriber rate are and the odds of people actually seeing this video, it's definitely going to be in your benefit to follow so that you can stay on top of things and hopefully be one of three people that's most likely going to enter the giveaway. But yeah, so thank you guys again so much for tuning in. I hope you guys learned something today. Have a great night. Six speed out. We can attack the city. <laughs>